coming up. I try to find a home and a job for an old Bitcoin mining rig that I built from an Atom motherboard. Does this motherboard have what it takes to be the ultimate silent home PC? Or does it fall just a little short? We'll find out in this week's episode of An In-Depth Look. Armed with my USB thumb key and an Xbox Live Media Center distribution, I went off to try to make the ultimate home theater box for myself. My goals were silent, 1080 output, and HDMI video and sound combined. Now, this motherboard met most of those requirements. It's got a fanless CPU uh, heatsink. It's got HDMI out the back of it. Also, optical and coax audio is available. It has 802.11 and also gigabit Ethernet. So, if this thing could do the job of 1080p playback, I figured it was a slam dunk. So I set off to build a little test box to see how it went. Drive light isn't flashing. Uh oh. Something, something, something didn't go right. Something didn't, something didn't, something didn't execute properly. Well, that'd be fine. That'd be fine if it did. <laughs> if it would launch the installer, I'd be happy. That'd be a, that'd be a real great spot to get. <sighs> All right. So now we'll see if it just auto detects my video card. This is an ATI 5830 uh, with one gig of memory on board, hooked up via PCI Express 16. But now we're running the display off the ATI card. What the F? What the F? What the F is that? I, th I think there's some sort of weird driver issue. It definitely worked better using the built-in chipset. Plus, uh, the other thing that's really nice is the built-in chipset has HDMI with audio already working. I don't know about the ATI one. You might have to mess with that driver, which I, it's, <clears throat> I've had problems with that under Linux before. So I, I would be more inclined to want to use the onboard HDMI because I want to hook up over HDMI or the optical or the coax. Um, I guess you could use the HDMI out of this for picture and you could use the you could use the optical out of the onboard for sound or the coax. But in my mind, unless you need 1080p playback, I would go with this and just use 720p content. I don't know if that would work for most people though. Uh, Cause then you might as well just have an Apple TV. The nice thing is, is even with this video card, though, it is still silent. So I suppose if I could get the video card drivers working, or just use a regular, full-on Ubuntu distribution or something like that, I wouldn't probably have this issue. But I like the idea of doing the live thumbstick thing because no moving parts, and it's really easy for anybody <clears throat> to just go download the image and use UNet Bootin to, to flash their drive. So I kind of I kind of wanted to be able to just say, you know, grab a thumb drive, plug it into this $180 motherboard, and you're good to go. Can't really say that unless 1080p video isn't a requirement. But I'm gonna keep playing and see what I can do. But not all hope is lost. If I had a slightly different board, one that has the ION chip on it, I could utilize that. OpenLEC, the uh, distribution I attempted to use, would be able to utilize that for hardware accelerated HD playback. Now, I think it only works for H.264 files, but the chip has a pretty good reputation. It's basically the same chip that's used in the Roku 2. So if you've ever used a Roku 2 and been impressed with its HD capabilities, you could theoretically get that with an ION motherboard that has an Atom chip on it. This chip is missing that, so this would only be good for 720p playback or standard definition content like HD movie or like uh, like uh, DVD movies. Um, and that might be fine for a lot of people, especially if you're okay with maybe re-encoding your videos. That's not really the solution for me, so I'm going to take a look at the one that has the ION chip on it and see if it can do better. What that means, though, is I'm left with this Atom motherboard that still needs a job. So I think in the future, I'm going to look at turning it into a home file server, something I could stick in my office real quiet, you know, something I wouldn't mind going while I'm recording. So I'm tempted to see if I can still utilize the USB booting so I don't have any moving hard drive parts and maybe hook up like an external uh, storage array, either through the eSATA port or through the gigabit Ethernet, maybe like over iSCSI. So that'll be a future segment that I do on an in-depth look. Next week, however, I'm going to look at DOSBox. 
I uh, I realized that when I covered that Star Trek 25th anniversary game, so many of you hadn't actually even experienced DOSBox itself, which is critical to running that game. And it's actually a really interesting experience that you can jump into and find yourself in a lot of cool historic apps that are just awesome to kick around. So if you have any comments about DOSBox, leave them, and I'll incorporate that into next week's episode. Well, that just about wraps up this week's episode of An In-Depth Look. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to tune in next week. A new episode comes out every Saturday. If you'd like to send me a suggestion, I would like you to hit me up on a social network that you prefer to lurk. You can find links to all of mine over at bit.ly slash chrisfisher, or you can email me, chris at jupiterbroadcasting.com. Oh, and by the way, we have a new contact page up and running. Go to jupiterbroadcasting.com slash contact, or you can just find the link on the front page of the site, and you can select the show you want to give feedback for, and it'll be sent directly to the show and to the host responsible for that show. So that's a great, easy way to get a hold of us now. And again, that's over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash contact. One last shameless plug. If you would like to buy either this board, which would do 720p playback, or the board that will do 1080p playback, I have links to both of those in the show notes. We do get a percentage of your purchase. That helps the network. And also, before you shop over at Amazon UK or US, Newegg, Best Buy, ThinkGeek, Audible, or if you want to get a mint.com account, just scroll to the very bottom of jupiterbroadcasting.com, and we've got affiliate links. And if you click those before you shop, we'll get credit for your entire shopping session, and it's all done anonymously for you. We just get a little cut of the action. So thanks to everybody who does that. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for tuning in this week, and I'll see you right back here next Saturday. <laughs>